Toronto. It says we're live. We are certainly so live. Can... And okay. I'm going to do uh, share it to my page, which will bring in all of our friends. Yes. And then Todd Church pops along. He should be able to just click that link and be here as well. All right. But I have to warn you. Anybody who joins, don't use your app to report me. I do not have oh a flu virus. Okay, I'm, man. Don't even think about calling me a snitch, dude. Free speech. I, well, you know, that's I'm the fun thing. <laughs> that's, the fun, that's the fun thing about these phones is you actually don't have to report anybody. What's going to happen is it's an option in the next operating system where it's already going to be checked on. And you have an option to check out of contact tracing, but most people won't do that. Um, so, but don't gotcha. report me, anybody who has the early app. I've got allergies and I've been working in the garden all day and I, I missed Todd's earlier stream. I will say I love Facebook. And the reason why I love Facebook has nothing to do with Mark Zuckerberg, but because of the people that are on here. Lori, someone told me about green tea Oh my gosh, that's the only way that I'm even outside today because green tea is an antihistamine. And that was um, the last thing I needed to come completely off a of big pharma. Yes. Oh, Sean yeah. Yankee said he already reported us too late. <laughs> what? Let me put your it's name funny. here because uh, it didn't work. I, want, I want your name to show because I don't know that people know who you are. This is Lori Root Riley. This is the one who brings everybody together. And it used to show your name under here, but it's not showing. Anyway, I see a lot of folks coming in. I don't see Todd just yet. Oh, good. Do you want to okay. give us a rundown of your thoughts and, and, and where your mind ended up? Um, during his okay. stream, and we'll kind of go from there. And if Todd comes in, then then you guys can talk. Okay. Todd has totally. The. And the truth about how women are so sexualized these days that um it's all about money for sex you know and that's like women's entire existence and they will f you over in a second if the next dude has more money etc and that is all truth that's in our society and i get that so i got mad because i was hearing absolutes there so it's not absolute because I have never, I'm a 60 year old woman that loves men and loves sex and loves all the stuff, but I've never been that way. And I've been abused the other way. So, um, it's a two way street was mainly my, my input there. And it's all about the division the division and it's one among many races, sexes, ideas, um, religions, everything. So that's my whole point. And I know he's been gravely injured. And I also know he's with a absolutely amazing, beautiful truth telling freedom fighting woman right now that I love. So like, appreciate that dude. And you're lucky you got it because so many of us don't and won't. And that's okay. I'm fine by myself. I'm a sovereign. So I got that concept and I work on it all the time. So that's basically my point. We're all in this together. And I so hate the Orwellian, you know, way they have turned around all of language so all in this together, stay home, stay safe, stupid things. They turn it on its ass backwards. So, uh, hey, Sean, I heard you reported us. <laughs> I do. love you. 
And Sean did. Sean's amazing. I love that brother to death. I, I wish I were around a little more to catch his live streams, but I'm I'm unfortunately in the garden right now. You know what? I, I love what you just said. And and I'll try to fill in best I can till Todd gets here. Um yeah, it's it's there's there's so much hurt that's out there for so many different reasons. And it's so hard, I think, to try to get in the middle and and just try to see the game that's being played on everyone and yeah. coming from a male perspective i understand where todd is coming from and i do everything i can to ignore that perspective in my personal life right like my journey right now is i'm trying to understand more of what other identities have gone through right I, i'm trying to understand more what women have gone through but you know, folks who don't have my race or my religion or live in my country. And I think that's the only way we get to some sort of understanding. But agreeing, and you and you and I, we talk about it a lot. Agreeing with identity is really what's keeping this table up, right? Keeping everybody in conflict in what you just said in the absolutes. That's what's keeping this psychopathic, ridiculous table up and the table needs to fall absolutely absolutely i love your perspective you're a you know you're a human and you're a human with empathy and love and growth and you never stop growing and learning and that is the goal for all of us and i so appreciate you as a friend and a brother Oh, I appreciate you more. Thank you. Thank you. No, it's, it's, we're all, we're all connected and we're all going to either survive by each other or we're all going to die. Like, I like, Ooh, hashtag we're all going to die. No, I, I like when we have funerals and someone dies and we say they survive by, and we list like three or four people or a few people in reality, that's completely false. We survive by 7 billion other people. And until we do right by all 7 billion people, no matter where they're from, where they got these penises or vaginas or this light skin or dark skin or whatever religion or God they want to follow, until we do right by everybody, we're destined for extinction. And, and to me, I think that's perfect in how Mother Nature or God or whatever this puts it together. Until we love everyone equally as we love ourselves or love everyone else even more we're just waiting for the end to come absolutely yeah and so no matter what happens because our lives are always like this story that's ongoing right and lately and for our entire lives, but we see it so clearly now. Lately, it's been a very oppressive story that points us to the end for not only us, but our children and grandchildren. Um, and all of those 7 billion cousins. Um, yeah, we're here, we're at an apex, and it's either a great awakening, which we see, we see it every day. We have new friends. We hear the the wisdom from all. Um, but it's either that or it's just going to freaking end. And it's going to end for each of us individually. That's what death is on this plane. So we're just trying to make it better as we go. And that's it. It's like planting gardens, growing gardens. Growing love, um, seeking the best always. So yeah, uh, so many people are just so inspired by you, and you do this work every day for years and years. And thank you so much. <laughs> we're in so much trouble, Lori. If people are inspired by me, we're 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 not gonna make. It. <laughs> we're not gonna make it. Um. No, no. You know what? I, I'll be honest with you. I got in trouble this morning and it's probably not too different, you know, it, 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 than, than what you and Todd and the kind of the opposite sides of the same concern. 
which is I had a brother fussing at me this morning. And he and he's a good guy, really good guy. I used to uh, march with him and protest with him back in 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 a children's rights uh, uh, I call it a movement. What we were doing back then, because family court was taking kids from ch uh, uh, children from families. And ah, oh, he fussed at me today, Lord. He said, "Ah, oh, you know what? You're just useless and you talk bull crap on the internet. And I don't know why you post all that stuff and it's a waste of time. Get off of the internet." And I love a brother to death and I'm like trying to get his perspective where he's coming from. But like thinking back to what he dealt with, like, you know, he lost, um, I believe he had a daughter and he had, you know, his daughter taken from him. And so he's got this anger and he's got this, you know, stuff that he wants to get out. And so I like I, I was trying to understand his perspective. I get that he wasn't, you know, cussing at me necessarily. He was cussing at you know, he wants an end to the system, right? He's kind of not too far from John Sean and kind of believing in a revolution and, and violent solutions to violent problems, which, you know, is another type of hurt, right? Like I, I get that he's carrying this hurt with him. And I think when we carry that hurt, sometimes we lash out at the wrong people. And and I, I tried to explain to him the best that I could, and I probably failed. <laughs> but the best that I could that well brother you know you you think I'm on the internet but I'm not I'm literally in the garden I've been planting all day which is why my nose won't stop running and I'm drinking this green tea is you know I post in between doing things and it's just weird there's something about being in nature I think it hijacks me I I love to say that I'm so smart and I come up with things to get people to talk and I really don't. I just go outside and I'm in the garden. I think the plants are fungi or something just puts like thoughts in my mind. And I'm like, oh, let me throw this to my the smartest friends that I know. And they happen to be on Facebook, you know, which is what took me back to the original point, which is I don't hate Facebook. I love Facebook. The smartest, most intelligent people like Lori Root Riley that I know are there. And I need to bounce things off from them, right? There's a lot of fake news and fake foul false stuff that's out there and anytime i hear something hey we can get some blow dryers and, and fight the cuckoo virus i need to be able to post it on the internet and have lori Root riley say what the hell are you thinking about what's wrong with your brain boy you know i i need somebody to do that and so for me facebook is kind of a filter media like i have thoughts and i post them out there i wouldn't know about green tea somebody just asked about this I love Facebook. I love it not because it's Facebook or Zuckerberg, but because the most intelligent people I know are here and I can post something and they can filter it. Around this time yeah. last year, I posted something. I'm like, I'm sneezing and hacking and coughing. And the only time that I'll ever buy anything from Big Pharma is an antihistamine. And I hate doing it. I haven't had to do it in five years, but I can't cough and sneeze for two weeks. And someone posted, hey, all you need, dummy, is a little green tea. I'm like, that's stupid. Shut up. I don't need green tea. That doesn't make any sense. <laughs> green tea is nasty. And of course, I looked it up and green tea is an antihistamine. I tried it out. And as soon as I did, like the sniffles, I was outside just now with puffy eyes and sneezing. And I thought you and Todd were going to be able to talk and I could like put the two of you together and I could back out. So I made me some green tea and it actually works. It's great. Wonderful. Yes. Green tea with honey and lemon is like freaking delicious. You feel everything come alive in you. I love that combination. Just me. But yeah. This is a commentary happening. I don't know if you want to read through the commentary, but I okay, didn't. I'm seeing Walt Pareto saying the only way to save humanity is to come to the realization that there are interest species predators born among us. I believe that. They are called clinical psychopaths. I know. They are born without empathy. Yeah, and I'm not sure about the born, but I know that happens to them through abuse. Uh, I know that happens that way and maybe the other way too. My mind is open. And they mask themselves using PR, propaganda, disinformation, and religion. Yes, Walt. Yes. And... In my case, the ones I've known very closely, they are the most charming people. 
you would ever meet. And that charm buys its way into your life and then destroys it. Say so yes. Ooh. Excellent. Yeah, and you hit something too. So it's not just that they come in, but then you have the more yeah, successful is. ones that create the system and turn more people against each other that creates more harm and more hurt and it just keeps going and going and going oh my god well you know so that comment made me think of there was some neuroscientist i used to follow because i don't have a life and i watch lectures all day <laughs> and soil food web but it basically said that psychopaths are are, are aren't human that they have you know, these abilities to do things that no human can do. And it made perfectly good sense. And I took what that neuroscientist said and I tied to what Dr. Fallon said, which is the psychopath is made up of, well, they're us, but there are 27 warrior genes that we can up, you know, turn on and turn off, that, that turn off empathy, it turns down love, turns up aggression, fear, to allow us to do evolutionary type things. And then I added that with what I got from, I think, Sag Guru. This is why I love the internet. <laughs> and it's just like, well, but what if when you turn certain things on and off, it allows other energies to interface with you? Like, we're driven by fungi, we're driven by microbiology, we're driven by things that we don't understand. Is it possible that we're drivable by consciousness? Is it possible that, like in this movie K-Pax, where you know, you you can be kind of be co-opted and driven. And to me, it makes me think about the, the Bible and scripture and possessions. Right? <laughs> and the Catholic Church is, is stepping up. They created a new school for teaching more priests because they didn't have enough priests to do possessions. So I don't know, Walt, Walt and Lori, I mean, you guys just took me down a long ways, but I think there's so much to that that we simply don't understand. What I do know <laughs> is the violence and the conflict have to stop. And the only way it's going to stop is when we stop worshiping whatever these things is people call psychopaths and the systems they create. Yeah. Yeah, we see the effects. We definitely see the effects, whether we know um, what all the causes are. And, you know, whether it's alien invasion, Anunnaki, whatever, they came and lizard people, whatever. We see the effects and we know that there is definitely evil and we know there is good. So that's where we are. Absolutely. I'm going to click on a couple of comments I think are interesting. I don't know if you can see the comments unless I click I on them. I can see them one at a time, but please, yeah, I love the comments. Okay. You want to address it? I want this one to be about you. And I do my best to shut up. Sometimes it's kind of hard to do that. <laughs> no, it's about us, all of us. Jonathan Close said, I'd add the dark magic rituals the cabal engages in destroys empathy and consciousness. And it makes sense. Absolutely. Empathy and consciousness are the, that's how we got here. We got yeah. here by turning off empathy and consciousness. Yes. If any human cannot see the beauty and the preciousness in a newborn baby, they are not us, you know. That is our fight. Because they are blank slates looking for nothing but love. You know, so the ones who cannot see that, that is our enemy, and we know that those people are full of greed and have risen to the top of the pyramid, and we're all under here slaving along trying to feed our babies, and we're messed up too. No human is perfect, but the intent and what's inside us is, is what we are, really. And I don't care. I mean, end of world, yeah, end of humanity, okay, going to happen at some point, and we seem to be getting closer. And depopulation agenda is bringing us there as fast as it can. And we just keep keep on keeping on 
growing our food and loving our our fellow humans and that's you know that's what we do and that's and us. Did, that was my my point to the loved the loved brother who was upset with me this morning you know, he asked, what are you doing like man i'm growing food you know, I've got kids that live next door and in the neighborhood, and I know some of their parents are unemployed. And usually I'm selfish, and I don't grow enough for everyone. And this year, I got a little extra parcel of loom, and I'm growing as much as I can. And so I'm spending most of my day out there growing, and I'll post on Facebook here and there. Uh, which probably to people on Facebook is like, how in the hell this guy doesn't have a life? He doesn't. <laughs> And really, I think I'm being <laughs> driven by, yeah, I'm driven by other things when I'm in the garden. And I'm just like, well, what do you want us to do? Like, you know, we're literally in a depression and we haven't felt it yet. And we are going to feel it soon. The price of food is going up. I've been telling people to plant their garden, get some seeds and grow some food. And I just got an indicator from a friend that owns a garden shop that even the seedling prices are going up. So a lot of people think they're coming out of lockdown. They're going to run to the garden center and grab some seedlings and grow a garden. And it doesn't work that way. Most garden centers in the United States, they don't grow their own seedlings. They get them from Mexico and Canada and they get them imported. And the imports have been shut down. So it's like all of these swings that come and it's just like, I don't, I guess, I mean, I know where he's coming from. And like I said, I love him to death. It's just, I don't think people really realize that you know, we people who can't eat are very dangerous people. People who don't have food are very dangerous people. Ooh, people who can't yeah. afford food. You know, and so gardening is central to all of that. And whether you think it's just feeding people to get good behavior out of them and prices are going up, or if you want your revolution, you know, every war on an empty belly is lost. <laughs> now I'm not interested in feeding anybody who wants to fight in a revolution. I'm I'm I guess my 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 two cents there is that when we have a clear and present problem in front of us sometimes you got to deal with the problem that's directly in front of your face and that is fall is right around the corner and we don't we know we don't have enough food in the United States. yeah started with toilet paper hey what about <laughs> something to put in your belly so you aren't starving you know feel some, some of that it. hunger and you know what? Every person you help always brings you back tenfold. So much love and good feeling. And all of us do that. The people on here are incredible. I'm seeing Christine wins right now. Like we're just real humans that we know you give, you give and you get. And that's what makes life worth living. So, yeah, yeah, yeah. Let me say something real quick because Lorna Mayuki, she has the most awesome Instagram. I'm going to have to correct her on this one. She says, I have a good heart. I don't have a good heart, Lorna Mayuki. It's just a heart. <laughs> That's all it is. There's <laughs> nothing good about feeding children is not a bonus. It's not a good thing. It's not a cut above. That literally is the bare bones minimum of what a human heart <laughs> I love her Jordan, to death, but I you're so you're so humble and you're so humble. Yeah, I know, I know, because any any praise you get, you're like, I am not. That's how you are. <laughs> I'm not. And that is the definition of humility, sir. But you know, accept it or not, but all of us know what you no, give. All, no, no, I'm not accepting that. Uh uh. All of us know. <laughs> all of us know that if we have the ability to do, we will do, right? I happen to be in a position where I can grow food and I don't have a life and I can get a microscope and look at the soil and fix the soil and my neighbors can't do that. My neighbor might be able to fix my car. My neighbor might be able to pair my roof. So I'm not doing anything great. I'm not accepting that at all. We are all a tribe together. And if we all don't do our parts, if we don't get out of what the GDP says essential, these psychopathic billionaires and start doing the bare bone, basic essential things for our neighbors and each other. Cause we are our neighbors. We are each other. So we are. Not, we are one. Maybe, yes. 
Okay. Maybe it's just we're not used to being adults, right? We're not we're not used to it because we were all raised to be children by this psychopathic society. So I get that and I'll go along with that, but it, it's not anything great. It's the bare bones minimum that I could do. Okay. Right? So the way one way to put that is no leaders, no followers. We walk side by side. Absolutely. So, and we don't tell each other what to do. We don't tell each other what to do. I was one another thing I told the brother this morning. Don't cuss me. Don't cuss at me. No cuss at me. I said, Well, what are you working on? I'm growing food. What are you working on? He said, Well, I'm working on unity. It's like, okay, you're working on unity by telling me I shouldn't be on the internet posting bullshit. <laughs> <laughs> but you know, I was like, you know, that's the type, that's the flavor of government authority unity that got us here. That's that's the same flavor of I know what's best, so everybody get in line and follow me. So I'm gonna I'm gonna back your comment up. You can't have any followers and you cannot have any leaders. That we tried that. It does not work at all. That's not unity. That's you telling everybody else what to do. So yeah. Yeah, I le have learned so much from you, and I'm so happy to call you friend and connect with you five days a week and in your post through the weekend. Just, you know, and so it's many days. nowhere dudes near what I learned from you. It's nowhere near what I learned from you. I could be sitting here right now with like a mask on my face with some hot air blow dryers that uh, <laughs> I can have two. What are those? Uh, the hair dryers? <laughs> Blowing hot air to make sure I don't get the cuckoo fire. So whatever you learn from me, I learned a hell of a lot more from you from you. Shoot, I could be jacked up and you didn't teach me. <laughs> yeah. And just accepting like the questioning, the questioning is the entire thing. Like being able to question every single thought that goes through your mind. Yes. Us, we do that. And everyone on here does that. And that's just amazing because no closed mindedness, brain plasticity. You know, we live, we learn, we grow. Otherwise, we're dead while we're still alive. And hey, I ain't into that. You know, let's let's keep living. Amen. Amen. Um, question everything and mostly question what's in your own mirror. And I think I was blessed enough to get a, a, a decent Facebook where I can filter things by people. And I, I think most people kind of know me now that's on there. And it's just like, yeah, well, you know what? Gerard's in the garden this morning. <laughs> I can tell he's out in that damn garden and he's, he's out planting plants, getting these ideas, posting this nonsense. And I think the people who love me, they understand me. They're like, yeah, OK, well, if he says anything stupid, I'll correct, I'll, I'll correct him. If he says okay. anything I need to add to it, I'll add to it. You know, but sure that that's just mm -hmm. Gerard. No, I'm, I'm not worried. He'll be done in about an hour or two. <laughs> Let the caffeine <laughs> wear off. Let him get too hot working outside. And he'll shut up in a minute. You know, then other people are offended, I guess, or annoyed. I don't know. But that's what Facebook is for me. It's just it's a it's a means of filtering. Like you just said, where you can question yourself effectively. And I find I can't question myself effectively without you guys. Yeah, the community. Yeah, definitely. And we do like we're humans. All of us are humans. No leader, says Tony Smith. We are all sovereign beings. Amen. Tony has taught me so much. And oh, Tony's was, amazing. Oh, God, he's amazing. That he's a beast. No yeah. <laughs> and like we get for me. I get all triggered, especially by men, like I did with Todd today. And like I pick on one word. He's saying all women are these hoes out there, you know. And I'm like, oh, my God, I am not. And lots of other women are not. So I see that. Um, that was me. Just if I ignored the word all, you know, <laughs> and I didn't take that personally, um. I'm a stronger person and you guys like forgive me for that all the time. And we forgive each other for whatever um, silliness we say and we keep going and it's amazing and it makes us stronger and more knowledgeable and better able to deal every day. Well, so, you yeah. got to be able to be yourself. You have to be able to be yourself. 
and people who love you will let you be yourself. If if it's mm -hmm. if it's you when you need to flip out when someone says everybody and all, yeah, you know, if it's Tony and and Ty and Q and you know whatever, <laughs> like you got to let people be people. You know, um, the yeah. whole cussing thing. If I ever grow up and I get to cuss, I'm a cuss like Tony. Tony is off the hook. I love that brother. <laughs> Tony that brother is fucking great at cussing. Yeah, he's, he's a master. He's he a master. Yes, he's a master. He says it, and I feel it. And I'm like, oh man, I can feel that, you know. But I can't cuss. Right. I can feel it. And yeah, and it's not cuss, bullshit. It's real. <laughs> well, I, I think I jumped in the hot seat with Tony the other day because I saw you cussing on his stream. And I was like, I ain't never seen Lori cuss like that in my I didn't even know you could cuss. I didn't know it was possible that you had just just some 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 filthy flurn, foul flurn words was flying out your mouth. But you know, everybody has to go through something. It's not that I don't cuss, it's just I don't cuss on the internet. I don't cuss in front of my children. I don't cuss on a regular basis. But if I stub my toe, oh, come on. <laughs> it is what right. it is. Right. We all have those words in our heads. Come on. Like, you know. Right. And it's like George, Carlin, George Carlin, the seven words you can't say on television. He fucking, okay, he nailed it. Trying not to cuss right now. But, yeah, he oh, nailed it. You. He so nailed it. And it's like, these are words. These are words and we turn them into weapons. You know? <laughs> it's more shaming. It's shaming. Oh, you talk like that. Right. Oh, you're not a naughty person. Go put your oh. nose in the corner. Oh, you're you know? not worthy of the queen. You need to go smother thyself with soap. You know, <laughs> and like half of the stuff when I look at it, I'm like, dang it, I hate it. I'm so indoctrinated. You know, I don't cuss. I was raised that way, but I know where it came from. It came from them filthy rich people who felt that we were dirty and foul and we couldn't talk that way. Oh, well, yeah. Stupid. It came from my dad like, slapping my face, you know, like, oh, yeah. you know, good girls do not say that. And like, oh, yeah. and so it always felt dirty after that when I heard it. And it's like, no, it's really not. It's really not. It's another human expressing something in words. Okay, words are not. Um, they're just words. Yeah, they're just. And words. I'm working on that in me. I'm I'm trying to learn how to cuss, and and it's just not going to work. And 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 if I probably cuss, it's going. It's not even going to sound right. It's oh, it's going. You think that it was will not seven years no, old? <laughs> yeah, I've heard you. I've heard you slip a few. And we're I, all like, yeah. hey, hey, Gerard cussed. Everybody come look. Gerard said a cussed. <laughs> <laughs> I know. I, I've slipped like twice. And, and a few times I've caught myself before it like really came out. I was like, anybody catch that? And I'm glad to know that everybody's talking behind my back. It makes me feel not so confident. I, you know. No, we love it. <laughs> we're like, yeah, share this around. <laughs> I, you know what? Mm -hmm. It's just, it's like, you know what? I'm gonna relate that to um, today. We were just talking about like getting triggered by what other people say, right? Same thing with the curse words. They're just words, but everybody gets triggered, and we're told how to take things, and we need to stop letting billionaires in this system tell us how to take things. You got to let other people live in their own space, and sometimes it requires that they cuss. Sometimes it requires that they hit you, you know, and I think if you're an adult, which I'm trying to be more of every day, Lori, it's, it's hard, but I'm trying to, when people say stuff to me, I ask myself, are they really upset with me? Are they upset with something in their life that I'm triggering them because I said or something I did or didn't do? And it's hard to do that, but I think we need to do that more. Yes. Yeah. And love walking side by side with you and seeing your example. We, we all bring our gifts to the table and we all, we all grow from each other. So yeah, it's just, just words says Tony Smith. Yeah. Um, sure. that's what we do. And I just, Oh yeah. Teresa, Teresa of Ireland, I cast like a sailor. Look how I mean, beautiful she is. Can anybody even believe that? She looks like a goddess. She's oh. like Teresa of Ireland, as Tony dubbed her. 
I he's believe a God among us. Oh no, I be, I believe I and this is where I'm gonna invoke a Todd Church and I'm invoke a Tony Spirit. I'm gonna take in their consciousness for a minute because uh uh do not believe the pretty face thing. Do not do not do not. I'm gonna tell you what. Uh, men, there's a reason why men are scared of pretty women. Reason why men go the other way, because pretty women, all oh, they don't let it fool you. When they get up, I've had women throw plants at me. I when they get pissed <laughs> off, when they oh they will cuss you from the top to the bottom. It's like it's training there, but they're trained. We're tra it's like you said, it's indoctrination. Like we're trained to behave a certain way when everybody's around. And I think the right. more training you have to and do that. When you get hot and that man says a dude that doesn't, doesn't, whatever, and that woman yeah. doesn't do it, and you flip like, ah! So I believe yeah. it. I believe yeah. that she cussed like a sailor. I bet people in her town run when she get upset. Oh, I bet. Yep. But she is like truth warrior. She keeps on. Isn't and she's she? just so beautiful. She's a beautiful person. And um, she's hanging in there. Yeah. Sister yeah, I have up. done things like horrible, horrible. You know, everybody snaps. Come on, male or female, whatever. We snap and we get angry and we've done things we regret. Every single human. Come on. We okay. have our hissy fits, right? Frida, Frida Merkel Chase just posted something massive. I think she said this is an important link. Thank you, Frida, but you're going to have to find a smaller link. Because I don't think anybody can click on that. And somewhere in that, it might say report to contact tracing. <laughs> Which is just <laughs> not stuff. It's We're just trying not to stuff. Yeah. Yeah, here I am. Come and get me. And you I'm know what? I'm ready to go. I'm ready to go. Like a deer. I'm ready I'm to ready. go too. I'm ready to go, Lord. Like, I don't want to die, but I'm going to live. I don't, I've lived a great life. I've raised some amazing kids. I'd love to see how this all turns out. I'd love to see what will happen if we feed all the kids on the planet, if we give everybody the freedom that we need to, and we like end all these reasons for conflict. I'd love to see what that looks like. But if not, and I got to take one for the team, and I got to be the first one to say, you ain't injecting no vaccine in me. I'm ready to go. Oh, yeah. I can't <laughs> I'm wait to, to do that. Oh my God. You know, my job is totally hinged on that. And I'm, I'll be 60 in September, right? I'm an old lady. So um, uh, I've worked in this profession since I was 29. 29. 29. So I, I'm 29. me. I just am what I am, and it's okay. And uh, yeah, age is a number. I know That's that. All it is. But okay, so for the Social Security rules in two years, I can retire, right? and draw a social security pension, right? Awesome. So I don't think I'm going to make it there because of this Vax thing, because I ain't taking the shit. And I will tell them no and refuse, and we're going to be the first ones they're going to bring it to and then tell us right. to give it to the patients. So I am waiting. That's my fighting day. You guys all pray, because that day... And I will, I will video, I will live stream it if I can. I'll live stream right after, but I'm gonna say no, 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 no. Goodbye, goodbye to my profession, goodbye to my paycheck. I will live. It ain't gonna happen. And so I'm like excited about that now. It, it's supposed to. That should sound scary for someone who's worked their whole life and like planned for this day for freedom from their slavery. No, I'm excited as hell. I'm like, bring it on, oh. Bill Gates. Oh, so bring it on. I'm ready to go. I'm ready to see, call CNN and, and CBS and ABC and Fox and all the rest of them, because I'm gonna get me my bamboo stick, I'm gonna get me a pillow and some rocks, and they try to come through that door. Like, I, I'm not here to play, and I'm letting everybody know ahead of time. I'm happy to be the first. I'm happy to be the example. If yeah. You know what does it for me, Lori, when I think about all the kids who have gone before me, I think about all these little babies. My problem is I have too many friends that are nurses and they tell me things that the doctors don't say because the doctors are too scared to say. And so I've known there's been a problem with these shots for a long time by the professionals who work in the environment. 
And when, when I hear the stories about these little two-year-old babies and four and five who are one day, they're bouncing with a bubbly and just doing what kids do, crawling on the floor and eating lint and, and spitting out things a cat doesn't spit out. And, and all of a sudden, they just go lethargic and they're just spaced out after they have some sort of shot or something. Nah. If, if babies have dealt with that and four and five and six and seven and eight, nine, 10 year old children have had to deal with that. And I looked at a grown man on Dell Big Tree from about, what was that, about oh, two months ago? To exactly grown man. what I was, was thinking five. about. Yeah, he was, he was like, a veteran. Yes, dude. And crying in pain. I, mean, I think dude. about those people. Lori, it's my turn. Oh, it's my turn. I, I'm, I'm I listening. Can. Hey. Go ahead and try to evac go ahead and try to shoot, put a shot in the dough. I'm I'm happy to go. I am happy to go, but I will never live on a planet that allows children to be forcefully, criminally medicated against their will and their parents will ever again. So if I'm the first out the gate, I'm I'm shoot me first. You ain't going for me. They you say you they come to your house, Lori, you give them my address. Say, nope, there's a man over there that you need to go see first. <laughs> I'll do it. I, I think that's how you get yeah. your work. I'm like excited. And you know what, Tony? Tony like says that he's like the gatekeeper. He's the watchman. It's like the same exact thing you're saying. And I feel that way too. It's like, take me out and let it have purpose yeah, and meaning. They will have a purpose. Yeah. Take me out. Yeah. Um, I've had patients, I've had adult men, uh, veterans as dialysis patients, mm -hmm. two of them that specifically told me um, and put in their uh, medical chart and fought in court against the VA that they, they lost their kidney function from vaccination because as soon as they got vaxxed, forced vaxxed in the military, they lost their kidney function. They got sick. And then they discovered what it was from. One of them was 30 years old. And this man was an amazing human. Like, just a great guy. Um, and he was like, yeah, that's what happened, dude. So I see it in real life. And I've given so many vaxes in my career. And... I have like a moral ethical conflict with that in my head, but I did not know. I thought I was doing right. I thought I was doing, you know, like I believed in the medical profession, the whole thing. But what I did not see was it is all money driven mm -hmm. and it's part of the depopulation agenda for sure. Just like the MIC you know, military, all the wars, just like uh, it is it is big pharma and uh, the freaking GMOs just nastifying our, our food and our air with the chemtrails and our heart, uh, just all of the shit. They attack us in every way. Mm -hmm. And we're like these little people like trying to wake up and go, what, what, what? We're being beat to hell. We're being depopulated. How do we do this, guys? So, yeah. yeah. I, think, I think life sometimes is maybe you only got one purpose in life. And and maybe that is, you know, you live your whole life for that moment to just stand up and say no to a tyrant, to stay, say no mm -hmm. to a bully or an abuser. And, and I'm not a doctor. I'm not a medical professional. I'm not a nurse. I'm not anything. I'm just happy now that nurses and doctors across the board are coming out of the woodworks and they're saying, yep, we've seen this for a long time. And there's a lot of validity to what Del Bigtree is saying. Like he puts the big words in there and between him, uh, Dr. Buttar and Dr. Shiva, where they're saying this science is a hundred years old. It's a hundred years Dr. old. Mikovitz, dude. I'm replacing yeah. Shiva with Mikovitz. That woman is, Oh, oh man, man. Oh, yeah, Judy. Yes. Well, there's a bunch. Of, there's so many of them now, and that's what I'm saying. I shut up now because I don't have to say anything on vaccines. You have so many professionals who are saying this stuff okay. needs to be tested. It needs to be updated. That we're causing all kind of problems. They know the science behind it, 
And I can just just throw little jargon points like this is not science. All right. Pharmaceutical right. companies are not science. I used to work for them. All right. No. Yeah. Product, they used hundred year old science to come up with a product that's a hundred years old in methodology that doesn't work today and it needs to be modernized. Right. And so I just stop there. Or just do away with it. How did we survive for the millennia? centuries and centuries to now they didn't have freaking vaccines we have immune systems hello and ours are advanced we're living in the modern age inside our bodies is the universe yeah, so yeah we don't even need that medicine stuff nope. yeah absolutely but it, but it's useful it's useful I, I i try not to jump on any extreme camps it's like yeah, I get hit by a car. I'm be like, Doc, you can get me some crack, some cocaine, some meth, mix all that up in a pot of something. Morphine's the best. Dude. Huh? <laughs> morphine. Yeah, morphine. When I, uh, you know what happened to me one time? I was uh, working in this horrible slave job where I did acute dialysis. I worked like 60 hours a week running all over the place. Yeah. And I kept having this lower right pain lower right quadrant pain and I would ignore it and one day I like bent over to pick up the dog's food bowl and I felt and actually heard a pop and that was my appendix bursting because <laughs> I waited that long and I then sat in the ER all night because they would not see me they like checked me in and they're like okay there are no doctors, surgeons here till the morning. So sit in the waiting room and dry heave into your little like airline barf bag they gave me. <laughs> Every person in there was feeling sorry for me. It was horrible. But I went in there finally to the ER and the first thing they did was sh stick an IV and shoot me up with morphine. And I was like, dude, I love you. I'm in heaven. It's like amazing. <laughs> like opiates are damn amazing. <laughs> And then they cut it out like later that day and I spent a week in the hospital on antibiotics. But yeah, the morphine was like, man, I, if I, I would have killed myself getting up to that point just because it was so damn painful, you know. But, well, we need doctors. We need the pharmaceutical industry. We need the synthetic medicine. But they need to be in their place. And right now, we've allowed them to get too big to get outside of their place, right? Their place is enforcing their product on us because they use a little bit of science, you know? And if so, we can figure out how to reorder things, give people sovereignty back, let them decide what they want to grow and what kind of medicine they want to take and like let them be adults again. And, and, and then great things can happen. But I'm not, yeah, I'm not against the pharmaceutical industry in any way. I'm against it being an industry. I had this thought. If if we actually understood the human body, then medicine wouldn't actually be such a big thing that it is. If if there are so yeah. many sick people in this world that you have to industrialize medicine, it means the vast majority of the world is living unsustainably either in what they eat or where they live. It can't be an industry. It just has to be medicine for when people need it. Absolutely. And, you know, natural medicine has always been around. And um, natural nursing and doctoring and medicine men and shamans and healers. If that was your calling, that's what you did. And they had great wisdom. And it's almost obsolete now because it's all... Uh, you go to your pharmacy and pick it up in a bottle and take these pills with these really bad side effects. So, yeah, natural always is best. I like how people say there are no side effects. They're just effects. And like what, with what I'm doing now in the garden in terms of like soil microbiology and just like looking at these little microbes, I'm going to have to do a live stream one day with my smoothie, yeah. I'm gonna make my smoothie and I'm gonna show everybody Do all it. the life in it. And I'll be like, look, I'm vegans and vegetarians, we're murdering people, genocide, genocide. Where you can see all like all the little climby, crawly bugs <laughs> and, and I'm gonna drink it. Um, like that the whole Hippocratic oath of do no harm, right? 
we never, I don't think we take that low enough. You can't have a medical system that manufactures chemicals that kill off, you know, biological life, your flora and fauna that keep you alive and say you're not doing any harm. You're doing harm with every single drug you put in your mouth. And so once again, it's not to say that the industry shouldn't exist, but they should actually practice the things that they preach. If you know that these drugs are doing these epigenetic uh, gene flips in people and generation to generation, they're literally, you're literally changing your child's DNA by taking drugs and then having a child. If we know we're doing all this harm and they've known this for decades now, right. we have to be more honest with people. You know, the majority of these plagues, the real pandemics, the, plan the pandemics that are at the top of the list, the vast majority come from a medical industry that's completely lost its mind over chemicals that kill things at the, at the microbiology level and pesticide companies that literally lost his mind because they kill off the soil at the microbiology level. Right? Yeah, and I just want to say, um, I truly believe the vast majority of doctors and nurses in this world do not mean harm. They do believe in the first do no harm. It's why we got into this profession seriously. Because it ain't easy. It's never been easy. I don't care the doctors that make the most money, you know, they still have life and death in their hands every day. And I know these people personally, I've known them like my whole working life for 30 years now. Um, they are not evil. It's the system, it's the system. that has gotten into us and corrupted like all of us without our knowledge or uh oh I think you're freezing I corrected everything yeah so we who are not the elite we who are not the decision makers we are not the Illuminati, Luciferian, New World Order. We're, we can't blame each other. We've got to just keep keep talking and keep spreading our message. And, yeah. you know, when it hits you on a gut level, when it hits you, then you know. You know? And we have to welcome and, and love them. And yeah. fight them. <laughs> All of it. Any way you can, and in the only way that you can. And I appreciate how you're fighting, because what you just said was the same thing I saw when I worked in the pharmaceutical industry. Like, my right. family and friends, people I work with, they're on my Facebook. And they're like, what are you doing? I'm like, I'm telling the truth. <laughs> okay. <laughs> there, there are very good people in the pharmaceutical industry. In fact, I'll say what you said, which is what the doc most doctors, I believe, are good people. Most nurses are good people. Most people in the pharmaceutical eat people, most people working with AI, which is this other learning software stuff I did, they're good people. They believe the wrong leaders. They believe in the system. They have kids at home and they got to pay mortgages and they take on a little bit of evil. They take on a little bit of evil with what they feel is doing a great good will wash over it. But the problem isn't the people in the pharmaceutical industry. These people really think that they're saving lives. They really believe. I've only had one person who who worked on the flu shot who came and told me and said, don't ever put this in your body, ever. <laughs> don't ever give it to your children. They're experimenting on the general public. And like, I'm uh, not Dude, I'm even amazed at that because I've mm -hmm. been in this for decades. And like I said, I don't feel guilty because my thing is I am a sovereign goddess mm. and my intention has been right. So I cannot bring myself down and blame myself for what my masters did to me and all of us, you know, well, th I, just I cannot live in shame. I will not live in shame because I know who I am. You know, this person that blame themselves. And I'm trying not to say if it's a him or her because the pharmaceutical <laughs> industry, oh my God. Like the last time I talked to this person, it 
these people are killing you. I, I don't care what anybody thinks in terms of conspiracy theory. You can be as ignorant as you want to be. If, if, if a crackhead will kill you for 50 bucks, these pharmaceutical industries will kill you. So the person doesn't really want to speak up. But the person, I think there's a difference between like operating at a higher level than at a level. And you're actually constructing these things at, and you're a chemist. And you actually see that you're doing something or you're being told by your boss to do things that you should not be doing and putting in a human body. And so the person, I just think they saw too much and they were just like, you know what, I'm going to go do something else with my life. Threw their degree away, completely switched industry, just completely went and did something else. Um, You did that. Huh? You did that. I know. I did do that. What the hell was I thinking? That's crazy. Lori, I've lost my damn mind. I could be making, oh, I'd be making so much money right now. <laughs> no, I, I, you know, you, you can't. I think that, I think that there's something within everybody. And, the, oh, there's a scripture. There's a scripture. Um, something to the effect of different people are picked at different times, right? Some of the farmers got to stay in the field to the last moment. Other farmers are picked earlier and, but at the end of the day, they all get the same pay. I just think there's are some people. About, are you talking about the parable of the talents? The, to the each parable. one, a certain number of talents, which meant many, I believe. But what talents is, mean gifts, you know, no matter what language, it means gifts. So you're it's given related. a certain amount. It, it, it's related, but this was one about when people, you know, if a farmer came in earlier in the day, one came in later. The, oh, they came yeah. In the day, they yeah, yeah. The someone, started, someone started at 4 a.m. and he got the same pay as someone that started at 4 p.m. Yeah, uh, I got gotcha. you. Different jobs, but it's related to what you're saying because everyone has different talents, too. And it doesn't matter your talent or your job or when you wake up, per se. I hate the word wake up, but when you yeah. finally get that feeling in your gut that you're doing something you know you shouldn't be doing, you have to go. And 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 that person got the feeling. I got the feeling. Obviously, Dell Big Tree got the feeling. And you have to determine. Depending on where you are, you can do more harm by staying, and sometimes you can do more good by staying. And so there's certain nurses and doctors, and you know, I'm talking about you. And I'm also talking about there was a lady I knew in foster care. And this is back when I did the children, the children's rights movement. And I, and I said, well, why are you still here? Like, you know, I don't even want to say the city she worked in. She was high up in management. I'm like, well, you know that these kids are just numbers. Like, you know that this is human trafficking. You know that Title IV E destroyed any possibility of the system in mass being there to stop abuse and helping children. Why are you still working for these people? And her point was, because if I leave, I don't know who I'm going to get replaced with. Right. You know, I, I know that I'm doing my job and it comes with a degree of harm. But if I'm here, at least I, through the kids that are taken because their water shut off or their power shut off, like all these things that are wrong that our government is doing. If I'm here, I can funnel those funds and make sure when I see that little girl who I know is being abused. And I know the boyfriend is doing this, that, or the other. I can take all the money that comes in from the other kids and apply it to that one little baby who I know is at should be at the top of the top of the top. And I love that woman to death and I forgot her name, but it was huge for me. And this is why I'm saying that we can't judge each other and question who we work for or what we do. All you can do is let individual sovereigns make the right choice in the in the positions that they are because we never know what anyone else can see that we can't see yes oh god yeah yeah it's um what i've heard in 12 step programs referred to as the next best thing like i know i've messed up what is my next best thing it might even not be the perfect thing but yeah, that's so where I am because I love my patients. They are my family. Uh, so, and I know that I'm going to leave them. And it, like every time I've left a job, um, which hasn't been that many, I stay a long time at a job. Um, mm -hmm. 
I have that pain. Like when I left the kids um, in uh, pediatric dialysis, it was heartbreaking, but I knew I had to go and do this. So I had to say goodbye. But I've always known from the first time I stepped on to, you know, in my nursing shoes and pulled my big girl panties up, um, I was doing the best thing for every person I came in contact with. So, yeah, I totally get what you're saying. And um, it's I am not letting it conflict my mind right now because I've got my path. And my path is the minute you tell me I'm getting a Bill Gates fax is the minute I say goodbye. And I say goodbye to each patient and tell them I love them and hang in there. And they can keep calling me just like they always can. I'm still here for them. I just don't get paid the evil um, pyramid dollars for it. So fine, you know. No, yeah. It's that funny. It resonated with me. Thank you. It, it's, it's that money. It, it Profit breaks everything. This, and this is why I used to be a capitalist, but now I'm so against all the capital-based systems, whether isms or anything else. In, in the meantime, while we're actually chatting, I'm trying to bring Todd on. He said he didn't get the link. Todd, I sent you another link. It should be in your messenger. Um, all you got to do is click the link. Um, I money really thought you were Todd. When we were first talking, I was talking to you like you were Todd. And then I was like, this is Gerard's voice. Oh, <laughs> that was funny at the very beginning of this. Oh. Yeah. I thought you were Todd. Well, you know what? I just, I don't I, I, know. I, mm -hmm. <laughs> nothing. <laughs> What's that? Lovely. Nothing. Nothing. Oh, so okay. Go ahead, Gerard. You've got the mic in the floor. No, I don't want the mic in the floor. I just wanted you and you and Todd to talk, and and um, I was going to sit here and just just listen um, and drink my green tea. But I'm going to try to bring him in now. If he can come in, Todd, all you got to do. Is the link you know what todd is so banned he can't add anyone and i tried to add him on my live stream and i'm not banned like i get stuff censored and deleted um, and i've been in facebook jail but so far i can live stream and i have that little green option at the bottom to add somebody i just haven't ever done it but it would not work with todd yeah so, no no he they're coming for you, though. Don't get too excited about that green button, girl. They're going to take that button from you. You keep telling people. I to the, no, I can't either. There was there was a time where we used to be able to press it. But once you're on the naughty list and, and you've already done like 10 videos, you're going to you're going to when enough people report you and say, nope, she's saying truthful things. Good bit the boss, man. She's saying things that we should be careful with vaccines. And she's saying we need to be careful with Bill Gates and we need to be careful with the cure and the cuckoo virus. And then they're going to take that button from you. Just all you got, all you need is enough mm -hmm. of these little sellout, lost, silly people who don't seem to understand that billionaires run this country and they run this world. And if you keep giving them power, one day we're going to end up in that revolution that Tony and the rest of these people talk about. Um, but they keep reporting, they keep playing this game, but that's when they do it. I, I remember we used to be able to do it. As soon as you get enough yeah. little title tattletales that go run to mommy and nanny and the billionaires, because they want they want a they want a revolution. So they want to keep giving these people power. And I it, I'm gonna say put put, put put this thought out. I've because oh man, it's weird with me. It always goes back between laughter and seriousness. But for everybody who wants a revolution. Um, I wish that you all could go to funerals of three-year-olds. I wish you all could go, because I went to a funeral of a three-year-old who was shot by shot and killed by an assault rifle. Closed casket, of course. And I hope everybody, I didn't know the little girl, but I went to the funeral. I had a friend who knew her. And if everybody could go to that, if everyone could go to a three-year-old's funeral who was shot by an assault rifle, it'll solve the revolution in them. It'll solve the violence in them. It, and that, is that Jay right? Jay is Jay is commenting right now. Jay is a soldier. Jay will tell you what an assault um, rifle is a grown adult. You don't never want to know what it'll do to a baby. And so, and the, but the great thing about this, here, I can't see all the people. I see you get yeah. one comment at a time, but Sergeant Jay, oh my God, I love you so much. I lean on Jay. Jay is a veteran. And, and so the thing is, 
And Jay saw things that Jay didn't want the rest of the world to see. Jay knows that the children in this country don't need to see a revolution. They don't need to see any of that kind of violence. We're grown. We should be grown adults. We know that if we continue to push this system to a breaking point, that that's going to happen. And the great thing about that little girl is at least she had a funeral and a thousand people who wanted to say goodbye to her. We end up in some sort of a conflict or revolution, a civil war in this country. You only have time to bury these children. They're going to be throwing them in holes with adults. And that's what they did during the civil war. People, I, I guess what boggles my mind is people don't seem to have, they don't have a clue. They have no clue what's happening right now. No. Yeah. Two um, spoiled, two American, two were the greatest country ever ism. And um, not in my backyard. Yeah, you just don't know. It's going to come to your back backyard, you know. They've already but brought it here. I, I think they're already, they're yeah. already at war with this. We just don't seem to realize that. No. Know? And we can you walk know, away. Mm -hmm. I've been to patients' funerals when I worked in pediatrics before dialysis and after in dialysis where they were babies that we took care of for a long time from crack addicted moms that had big holes in their hearts. But these babies, they stayed with us for months and we loved them and they loved us. And it, yeah. So I know, yeah, the, the pain of seeing innocence destroyed, you know, Oh, and there you go. Hang on. I'm sorry. I'm bringing the brother in. He just popped into yep, the lock. There we go. Guys, can you hear me? We can hear you. Your hair looks great. Thank you. I love you. And um, it, it wasn't popping up. I, I And and what it, what it happened, I, it was my other page that Gerard ended up messaging. So I didn't. Uh -huh. I didn't get the message. So I'm on this page just waiting and looking and both of your guys' page. And then I messaged yours and you guys must have already been live. Gotcha. We've been live a while, dude. Yeah, I know. I, it just now popped up on my screen. Like it just now let me see it. I kept going gotcha. and looking. I'm wondering what happened. And then I'm messaging and then no uh, reply. Right. We already knew. We were just talking about Todd as one of the most sensual people on Facebook ever, so we knew, you know. Oh yeah, I figured you weren't getting the message. So no, most um, definitely. Hey, I love you too. I love you all. I, hey, I love you, Gerard. Man, good job doing everything you're doing for us, brother. I really appreciate you, man. And I appreciate and I love you to death too. I tell you what, you did a stream. I think it was last week when you started talking about quiet weapons for silent wars again. And there was so much in there that I forgot. And just by you doing the stream again, it like it really brought it forward that that's kind of where we are and the things that they talked about and that are happening now. So I appreciate what you're doing. I, I appreciate what Lori's doing. And I Most even appreciate the fact that Lori didn't compliment my hair. And I do try to get it up sometimes, Brother Todd. It doesn't always get up, but they make drugs for that. And I'm going to shut up for a minute. And I'm going to let you all have a great conversation because... I, I think identity is really getting in the way and tripping us up in a lot of places. Really solid, good, deep, loving people kind of get flipped up and triggered sometimes, probably in how we speak. And I don't know how to speak in a way yet where I don't trigger people and I'm trying to figure out how to do that. So I'm just going to let y'all, because y'all were starting a conversation. So I want to shut up and let y'all talk. Most definitely. Hey, we love you, brother. And um, thank you very much for doing this for us because this really can help a lot of people because the men and women don't really know what's going on and we don't know how deep it really goes for the different of the environments that you have to go through living as a man or a woman and coming from wherever. So this is something that can help us all be able to understand the positions that we're all in, you know. And thank you too, Lori. I love you. I love you too. And I know what I know, Todd. I know. So your heart is pure and your brain is on fire and you, you're a warrior, dude. And I know that. I respect you greatly. So when I have anything to say back, 
that doesn't agree 100% with you, which is most of the time I agree at 150%, is because it's coming from a deep place and it's right. I, you know? I completely understand. I completely understand. Yeah. And I don't like to talk about this about women and what's going on. I don't want to talk about these things. I, I don't like this. It doesn't make a good name for me, you know, but I have to talk about it as raw as it really is for what I've seen it do to the people around me, because the environment around me is exactly what this is. And I did not have the chances or the opportunities with any types of other different types of women because the ways that everything is broke down for the structure to work exactly how it does. Nah, I hear you. I hear you. I'm just I'm really, really excited about where you are right now in your life. Like mm -hmm. with research. I'm just I'm like a super stoked. So I'm not going to say anymore. I've already called out personal stuff. But yeah, you know what I mean. Oh, hey, we can be all the way personal about everything. I, I have nothing to hide. This is something that every speck of my life I shared pretty much on here ever since I've been doing this. I've been doing this since 16 and over 4,000 live feeds. I didn't hide nothing. I didn't hide nothing. I didn't hide anything that I was going through with the women that was living with me, the two women that was living with me at the time when I first started trying to do this and show people exactly what was going on because I know that everything that is going on in my life, I have to allow it to be seen because I know so many other people really are actually going through it. Because if yeah. we don't start allowing people to see exactly what's going on in our lives, we do not understand that the program is what it is. And it's exactly a program that most of us are dealing with the exact same things. Right. Like Chris Lewis tag the program to reprogram. Like exactly. That's what we're all doing. And um, is detoxifying is not easy shit. No, not and at all. It, we're all hurt. <laughs> So I know we're on the same page and mm -hmm. I like I love, oh, I love, I love you. Mass pregnancy in you. Oh, can I say something? I want to start a Kool-Aid. Can I say something? I want you know what? This, and that's what you're supposed to be doing because Gerard, you're one smart motherfucker and you need to be saying shit here and there anyways. I, I, I want to start a Kool-Aid and I'm not that smart, but I got jokes. Shut the um, fuck up. Men and women suck. I'm sorry. I'm just not on none of y'all's side. I think y'all all suck. Every last man, woman in between and the kangaroos too. I think they all suck. I think we're all raised jacked up and broken and indoctrinated. We send these babies to daycare and you give the little girls bottles and babies and doll houses and the boys guns and, and cars and and i think y'all suck i think y'all controlled by rothschilds rockefellers kings lords that make y'all really stupid and you treat each other like dirt and i think that y'all need to love each other a heck of a lot more and by that i mean me too i mean everybody i think we're all broken at birth i you know what i have to say and people don't agree with this, that I was raised in the church with this whole, this men and this women. I don't think so. I agree. I think there's a spectrum. There's a spectrum physically and physiologically and psych maybe psychologically. Not that I understand all them words, Brother Todd. But I think everybody's jacked up. And I think everybody's a spectrum from this. I think you got men who just want to play with a, do a Barbie doll. They just want to get the Barbie doll and get the car and drive it. And I think that little girls need to pick up some guns and run out there to toy guns and shoot each other with the water guns. And I think because people aren't living their own free, authentic lives, they're told what to do from the very beginning. You got all this pent up aggression. And then one day you're on a dating website, was that tenderoni or something? And you flip the thing and swipe the thing and you want to go meet somebody. And then y'all disagree and you end up in some fighting argument, but you're married, you got five kids, you're yelling, screaming, you go to family court. And I just think it's because people don't live their own life. If we just, like Pat yeah. Riley, Pat was here a minute ago. Pat Riley has a song called Free the Human Race. If we just free people, then men could be whatever they want to be with some slippers on the weekend and skirts on Saturday. And, and women could be whoever they need to be, matriarchs. I, I don't think... The problem is, is men nor women. I think the problem is the stupid system. It, it most yeah. definitely is. But uh, give me one second, please. I, I love you. Can I, can I go for a second, yeah. sis? Yeah. Oh, yeah. 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 No, I don't want to. Do you mind? 
Not at all, sir. I love you. Okay. I love you too. I just, I, I wasn't trying to cut you off. He was just saying so much and I wanted to say so much inside of all of that. So we are all fucked up for sure. Man and woman most definitely are fucked up. And the men that are fucked up that are being chased by the women are the main ones that is the main attraction. So when there are so many that are so much less that are attractive as the men, then now all men become the same because women are chasing all the same types of men. So yeah. that small amount that the women are chasing are the fucking assholes that they're chasing. But then also there's so many different things that give the leverages that it gives to the opposite sexes. You know what I mean? Like like with, with the control from the children, the control from the court system and stuff like that. The control of where someone can or can't go and the control of the mother that is controlling the home or whatever. So the people that have manipulated and made all of these things happen so that we would have certain types of um, being able to get away with certain things. Women could have boundaries that men can't have. Um, women can really go and find companionship or friendship that a man could never find or have a certain way because I'm just, this. just let me say, and then, you know, like this, it's all set up a certain way for the woman to be able to have certain things a certain way. So it makes it harder for men to be able to get away with the things that women can get away with. And that's what's making such the problems for all of us. Okay. You, you know, it, it, and it's easy for women to be able to use these manipulation tools a lot more than a man, because the woman has something that is looked at as valuable when a man doesn't have anything that he's looked at as valuable, except him being a provider. Yeah. I've heard you say that many times and I hear you, but the thing is, is definitely, like you said, those women that look for certain men to provide for them and stomp on one to get to the next that's higher or whatever. And um, there's also a yin yang to that. There is the flip side, dude. And like, seriously, um, if you knew my story from the beginning, you would not be ever privileged it's, with it. It's anything. like it's, it keeps on your sound keeps going like in and out, sis. Oh, sorry. Um, I don't know what to do for that. Can you hear me now? Yeah, a little bit. Yeah, it's better. Okay, I'm hearing like a staticky thing too. I don't think it's you or me. I think it's something else. Yeah. Um, my only thing is there. I hear you and I understand your story and it is um, rampant in our society. I see it with my son. My son is 30 years old. And dude, he's like, um, I'm not, hold on. Can I, can I say, I'm, I'm not stereotyping no one. We've all been stereotyped. We've all been racially profiled to be racial. We've all been, separated through the classes through the sexes and everything it's this is not me stereotyping this is what is actually happening this is what has made sex sell does man sex sell no how much more do you get out of a woman than you do a man in a porno people you need to open your minds up your ears and eyes and your heart and everything that you see around you and pay attention to the things that i'm saying because you might not want to hear it the ways that it's being done so so here's another side to the story, and you are absolutely right. And the sexualization is insane from tiny babies. Insane. And more money. Can... Okay. From an old lady's point of view, old men want those sexy chicks, those young what is, what is it now? What would you say, sis? From... It's like it's doing it again. Okay. From my point of view, okay, we're two different humans. Yes, in America. And this, this is why it's good for us to do this. I think you're like, I think you're in your 40s, right? You're I'm in your 44 40s. years old, yes. Yeah, you and Tony are the same age. And Gerard is just a tiny bit younger than y'all because he's 29, he says. 29, thank you, sis. 29. Um, yeah, and I'm 60. So um, I'm just saying, like, the older there's women also, get so now, so the there's women also, get, there's going to be a, a difference in the ways that we're we're 
because the different age groups too, even someone that's going to be 20 years old, for me, they're going to be thinking 20 years of difference of how well this manipulation has worked on us too. But also like just, just as we progress through the ages of our life, no matter older women, we're like, Mm, shit you ain't sexy look at that old hag you know what i mean we lose that that power. i'm not even talking about that though i'm just talking about the 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 levels of the indoctrination that we're going through now i'm not talking about it's insane it's insane because i'll tell you what i'm like a better human now than i've ever been because i've kept growing can i jump in yes Please. All right. Thank you. Um, thoughts. So I used to work in the family court system, and I'm going to explain something because I, I think I'm, I'm feeling some family court energy, right? Like the way the family <laughs> court system is set up, it's set up to take the children from the lowest paid or take the children from the highest paid parent and give them to the lowest paid parent because they know the highest paid parent will continue to funnel money to the lawyers to keep the fight going. So the judges and lawyers and everybody makes tons of money on the emotion of the parent with the lowest income getting the children, right? And this if is something you important. have the money, if you have the money to be able to fight. So right. If you have the money and there are judges that do other weird things, but it, it, it's, it's made to create a conflict. And so if I, I'm hearing a little bit of that. I wanted to put that out there. And the last thing I wanted to say in terms of the jungle, like the best I can, I try to focus on it. Stop that. I want, I want to focus on the jungle, right? Like this is what, this is what I see. I think that for the first time in a very long time, women are getting advantages that they haven't had, right? Before, y'all, I'm looking at the screen, man. I, I'm trying to think because I ain't thinking y'all making fit. So women are given the we ability nothing class, Gerard. To, We're making faces with behind the teacher. <laughs> We're doing teachy faces. Women are given the ability to tap into things that help them survive, right? We're in, in the past maybe looking pretty, you couldn't sell a car, you couldn't get a better job, you couldn't get a promotion, you'd only get raped and thrown on a boat or something like that. So I think what we're seeing, and I saw it a lot in the men's rights movement, and the lashback is, well, wait a minute. Men's rights movement? Power. Did he men's say rights, men's rights movement? The men's rights movement where everybody laughed at us because <laughs> we wanted rights, like there is a men's rights movement where someone needs it. I want to see this shit. Oh, oh it, it, it got destroyed. It was totally, oh, it was okay. eviscerated. I mean, what we were doing is we were whiny men because we were losing our children and we were committing suicide because we were losing our children. And, and that's what landed me going down that road where I landed on children's rights because it was wrong to take children from a man or a woman, from mom or from dad. But then once I realized that the system, the jungle is playing both against each other, then I said, no, we need to do children's rights because it's more about the children than the mother or the father. And they're just being played against each other. And so I think men and women are being played against each other, but we're seeing the system change and we're responding to that more than just looking at the jungle and realizing the system is making money and keeping everybody against each other who are trying to tap into different means of, of trying to survive. You, you understand what I'm saying? Like, I get what you're saying, Todd, and I get what uh, uh, Laura you're saying, but different people have different evolutionary, societal, economic, legal advantages, and everyone's tapping into those things, which ends up abusing somebody else, which is wrong. But the issue is the system. The issue is the jungle. And so I think, Todd, you got to tell your truth. Otherwise, people don't know. Lori's got to tell her truth. Otherwise, people don't know. But I think probably if we can, the best we can, let everybody speak what they went through. Because I, I remember the cases where the things, I mean, there are things I don't even want to say, the cases that I, I remember working with. But most people know some of them, right? Their parents who put their kids in the car and and drove their car into the into the lake right there are people who burn their houses down with their depression is a very real thing it is a very so, real so, thing 
and so anyway, that, anyway, that was that was kind of my point. I, no, I, that's I, good. That everybody talks, but always try to pull back and focus on the jungle. Everyone's trying to survive in a jungle where nobody has to be surviving. And they don't know the shoes that someone else may be growing up and living in because of the environment, not having a certain amount of money or guidance or something to be able to help certain people. So there's a lot of women that are in the areas where I grew up at that are going to act a certain type of way that's going to be different than the women that are growing up in another area just as well as the man or something. But no matter what, all of it still goes together in the ways that everyone is supposed to treat each other and value each other as a man or a woman, because the man is never valued for anything. Um, and always being the blame, like this Starla girl says, like, that's why it's hard for man can't speak his mind about anything about woman, but woman can always speak her mind about man and everything bad about him and how they're all the same. And then all women can say that, that, they're not all the same, but men can't say that. Do you know what I mean? Like this is in society. Yeah, there should be no muzzles or masks on anyone's mouth. I agree with both of you. I agree with Starla and I agree with you, Todd. And and don't ask me how that's possible. It's just how my mind works. Uh, men it, cause the problem. Well, well, but men but are the blame guys, because. Guys, the, it, well, can I take, can I take a minute? Men started that problem, but yes. other powerful people yes. above them put yes. them in the place to cause that problem in trying to survive. And so she's right that men cause the problem, but where we are today, is, and you're right as well, right? There's certain yep. women that yep. won't let you speak. You know, you're not allowed because you you have maybe more privilege in certain categories, and they do. They won't let you speak. But there are other women who don't speak at all, right? And they hold all their truth in, and they let men or anybody just just let it out. So I think, it, and once again, these labels get us in trouble. The identity, the generalizations get us in trouble. But I think everybody's right in their own space. We just, we don't really listen probably as well as we should try to. Well, the main things that I try and do, because what it is, is the relationships between people are the biggest things in the world that everyone has a problem with. And when you cannot learn how to have communication at home in your relationship to start to respect your man or your woman, whatever it may be, for whatever the reasons are. If someone tries to show you what's going on with the problems that we've been indoctrinated with, because you can go through it and you can see this stuff. And I've sat around and talked to so many people. That's what I was doing earlier. I was just talking with my my cousin and his girlfriend because they 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 argue and they fight. And I, I go through the same things with some of my, my other brother, Brian. I go through the same things with some of my certain friends that I would always talk to about their situations. I was like, you know what? This is good information. I should not allow this to be wasted right now. I'm going to go ahead and go live with this if you guys don't mind. So that's what we went ahead and done. And then so we started getting into the talks of everything and I wasn't paying attention to what you guys was really talking about. So I just started talking about the things that me and them we know and we've seen through our aunts and our, our, our aunts, friends and m mothers and all of our environment growing up in the welfare areas and the ways that women are manipulated in this area, father figures that really wasn't there, that was piece of shit, drug addicts and things like this. Because this is all we know. and We're not allowed to go any further than that because we're already separated and divided by the system for the machine to work a certain way so that we can always be in conflict with each other through the classes so that we can never teach each other about the same types of issues or problems that we really may have in the different classes with the ways that we can't communicate with each other. So I wanted to get I want to get people to be able to communicate with each other, because now when you start to see each other and respect each other as the same people that are having the same problems, no matter where you are, now you can listen to everyone. Right. Can I say something right there? Yes, please. I realize I realize this now because I do hear you and I always have what you say. It's oh, the I know. Thing that it's no one, no sex is one thing or the other all the way. So I know you know that, but that goes into the language. And that's what triggered me because I know I am the opposite of that. And my daughter and my granddaughter are the opposite of that. And my son has been hurt by that. You know, I know all of that, you know, my big family history. So that's where I stepped into your reality. And I wasn't even there at the beginning of it. I didn't hear the beginning of it. And I got triggered. And it started all this. 
So, oh, you're um, good. so I'm glad that yeah. this is happening because no matter what, there's some people that are going to be able to get what's going on and learn from it and grow from it and whatever else because of us being able to discuss this instead of the television to tell them what the fuck, you know, so some people are stuck on their manipulated lifestyles of every aspect of every situation to be able to give the perceptions for them to fight back with their lies and their own mind to protect their own ego and their own image. And some will learn from it and really dig and do their own research. Yeah. Yeah. And each person look probably everyone on here, everyone on here listening or that will listen has been through hell in one form or another. I know, like, okay, I'm going to call her out. Susie Rosenberg, she's like, she's older than me a little bit. And she's been married forever. And they have a great marriage. And But it's so few people we can point to for that, right? Especially truth lovers and freedom, you know, freedom fighters, truth seekers and freedom fighters. We know we've been through the bottom of the barrel. Like we've been crushed. We know we're not living in fantasy land. Everything's fantastic. So, yeah, we've all been through whatever form of oppression, whatever the worst moment of our lives has been personally is the worst moment in life because that's all we know, you know? I think... What's going on is certain people really have been sent here. And we've had to go through certain bad things in our lives to be able to allow the pain to boil up to the point to where we are right now for this little small time that we're going to be here so that we'll do the jobs that we're supposed to do in the certain areas that we are for the people that we grew up around that will respect and listen to our message because it, it, it takes many teachers to be able to reteach everyone to what exactly is happening here. So I think that there are people in the lower class areas. Mm -hmm. I think there's people in the mid class and the upper class that are all here to do a certain part of whatever that has made them feel the certain type of traumatic situations in their lives for them to be able to go through the drama to, to get to this point right now so that we would all do what we had to do. But then also we have to teach each other how we're supposed to be able to communicate with each other instead of hating on each other and always saying the exact same things that someone else says, like some of these comments that I've seen right now, because it, they feel like I'm bashing them or something, or women are supposed to, and then they're supposed to be like, this, fuck this piece of shit in their own mind. Like, I wish I could jump through the fucking screen. And, and it makes me... But the empathy comes in where they're coming from their own pain and their own situation that we You're know right. nothing know. about, dude. Just like I don't with you. I hear what you said and I get a feel oh. of it, but I don't know. You know, so I do not disagree with you in any way, shape or form. It's your life. It's your experience. Oh, I'm going to tell you what. Let the black privilege guy speak for a second. No, oh, um, fuck yeah, let's get some of that black privilege. Can I get privilege. some white privilege too? Can she get I, some white girl privilege? I, I can any of us get some kind I, of something? I can't help you with black privilege. I mean, but I, I can't help you with white privilege. I can help you with black privilege, male privilege, <laughs> Christian privilege, uh, mom and dad, good parent privilege, American privilege. I got a lot of privileges I'm, 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 I, I like to always put out there. I, it, it, I would say it's easy for me to, to look in the middle. Uh, I'll say this. It's easy for me when it comes to people with trauma because the first person I knew to hang themselves was a woman and the second person I knew to hang themselves was a man. And the thing that we really do have to try to get past. Do you I, think I there's more suicide? Hold on one second, because right now, just being on a video in front of a bunch of people, that gives an upper hand to a certain amount of something right now. And I'm going to act like and sound like a fucking asshole, but I don't care. Who do you think commits most Never. suicides? <laughs> Who do you think commits most suicides? Seriously. So even though that you personally, even though you personally, I'm sorry, even though you personally knew the first person that committed suicide was a woman does not mean that that's always going to be the case or the majority of the case. I just right. make that clear for some people that want to keep on trying to dig into that. Up. Anyhow, I'm, I'm right. going to get back. 
I have right. to pee and, real bad, so y'all are going to be looking at a ceiling fan, but I'm still listening. I got to piss real bad. Okay, you go pee, woman. Go pee, sis. I'm going to yeah. pee. There's yeah. a ceiling fan, yeah. and that's me. You didn't, you didn't ruin my thought because you pissing and pointing at the fan. But let me. I'm going to try to work with it. I'm going to try to work with it. So, so who do I think kills himself worse? Who, who do you think is the majority that really actually commits suicide? That, that, that hangs himself the most are the people with the necks. I think it's the people what is with it? the necks. Well, if the you people, look at the statistics about it, the men the kill people, themselves much more than women do. So, so the people with the necks hang themselves. Let me tell you why I, I, I say it that way. I think it was Martin Luther King who said, y'all correct me if I'm wrong. My friends love to correct me. Um, <laughs> something to the effect of injustice anywhere is injustice everywhere and Most so definitely. for me it injustice anywhere is injustice everywhere and but so we all mean yeah when i think, yeah, when we I also think about have to think about who constructed this though too we can't give excuses oh, we oh, have to oh, understand right. and know what's really going on right let me let me answer the question right so so for me when i think about it i don't care i only care about one person right i only care about if Courtney committed suicide, that is the greatest tragedy that's ever happened in the human race in Courtney's life ever. And we didn't do anything to save her, or we didn't do enough to save her. That is a tragedy big enough than bigger. It's like asking, I guess, is, is Yemen more important than Syria? Do more kids die in Yemen? Do they die in Syria? And I don't think it matters. But we have to worry about Courtney. Uh -huh. We got to worry about <laughs> Courtney and Tommy, though. We got to worry about well, Courtney well, and Tommy. Right. And, and in Courtney's moment, we were, we talk about Courtney and Tommy's moment. We talk about Tommy. But I don't I don't like do the statistics anymore. Like, I really don't care if if police shoot more black people or white people, the brown people, the yellow people, the immigrants are the police shooting people. Right. And, and, if, and if we you have, have to, that person, we have to explain it. But right. we have and, to, and we have to explain it. Hold, hold on, right. we have to, and we have to explain it like that so that it's understood. Because if we don't allow them to understand the ways that they have to think about it all, how it all works together, and who's actually doing it, then they're not going to be able to get it. We have to explain all of these things. We're retraining everything. We absolutely do. And and when and when you look at it, I think from a perspective of all lives matter, and they all matter maximally outside of any categorization, the system collapses, right? When you give a damn about everybody at all times and their life is the most valuable thing on the and planet. Why are we even doing this? Mark, why are we doing what? Then why are we even talking about any of it then? Like, because you, I think, I think, well, Lord, no, Lord. Why do any of us truthers talk about any of it if, if it matters? Like, I think that it should all be love. It should, I, I don't think. No, I don't think that it would destroy it. I think that it would make everything grow. I don't know. That's well, right, 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 right. Destroy, right. Destroy the psychopathic system, right? The psych, this, this, this psychopathic system, it survives because it puts black people over here, and white people over there, and immigrants over here, and Americans over there, and women over here, and men over there. And as long as all the poor people who have nothing to do with architecting the system keep fighting each other, then the children of the billionaires and trillionaires that created this system don't have to lift a finger. And so what I'm saying is when every single life matters and we stop worrying about the statistics and identity, the whole thing collapses because that's how okay. they keep it. Okay, I, I took it completely it's, wrong. It's, I took it completely wrong. I thought, I thought something else. I'm, no, I'm, I'm, I'm agreeing with everybody in the shop. I'm agreeing with everybody in the, from the comments to what y'all are saying, which is, you know, now how do we take this? and do something positive with it is I, I look at, you know, you spoke your truth and it triggered a lot of people, which it should. Why? Well, because true. I've dealt with more than what he's dealt with. Right. Like, and it's supposed to, and Lori said, Oh no, nah, that's triggering me. We got to have this conversation. Right. And now and we're on good. the conversation. And so it's a great thing. And this is why I'm saying there's no such thing as hate speech. This is why I'm against hate speech in every form, shape. or If somebody has lived in America and, and it gave them nothing but hate, we all need to hear that, or those of us who are willing to listen need to hear that. Because if we all can listen to each other's story and realize, you know what, yeah, well, maybe I think I've been through more than what that person has been through because of blah, 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 but I'm still feeling that person. I still love and no one, and no, one, and no one knows. 
no one knows what anyone has went through because you have to think about the hours that you really truly have around certain people to even understand what types of situations they've been through. And right. not a lot of people are able able to really put themselves in someone else's shoes at all, especially when the only things that they're worried about is everything just in their close comfort of their own family members and their friends and and and, and their job and 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 all of these things. So people don't go as deep as some people might go because I do. We're, we're all made bigots from birth, and, and that's yeah. the hardest yeah. thing to deal with. I was like a born empath. Seriously, I was born an old soul and an empath, and that's the hardest to around. I've been doing it sixty years, but that's just the soul I was brought in life. I swear, if the reincarnation stuff is real, it's I like your phone is doing that again or something, sis. Oh, I hear it too. I don't. I don't know what it is, and I. I don't know. I don't know it, if it I just got better. better. It just got better, so it, it's probably it how you're it was my, your phone. You know what? It was my damn finger. Thank you. Yeah, I put it in front of the microphone. Thank you, sir. I hope it's big now. But yeah, um, yeah. So you feel all that pain. You do. And then I have known people that are psychopaths. I've known them. For, I've been married to them, dude. That are psychopaths, and they have zero of it. Zero. And so that's the fight all of us are in, and we're all at one one place or another. Whatever we are, all one. I believe in the collective consciousness. And these comments on here, dudes, I can't wait to go back and read them. Like there was one man that I wanted to read out because it was so that I couldn't because everybody was talking. But yeah, we are we are all one. And everyone that would even take their time to listen to any of us three jack off for five minutes are truth living people. Or they wouldn't waste their time. You know what I mean? They feel like these fucking losers. You know? So, yeah. There's are, so many you know, people. There's so many people right now that are keeping their mouth shut and silence that are ready to kill themselves and that are ready to just go meet God or whatever because of them not being able to express themselves about certain things. And the majority is the men are not really allowed to ask for any help or show any weakness or cry or do any of these things to even say that someone is treating them a certain way because then you look like a weak man. So, yeah. and then women cannot go out and say anything about the certain situations that are going on in their home about the abuse that's going on with them as well. And we all keep hush and silence because we're so worried about other people saying things or attacking people, especially like when you see me get attacked as a man that speaks about the things that I do, that I know what I'm talking about in the environment that I grew up in, and I'm expressing it to try and help everyone understand what's exactly going on so that we can get past this stuff and start to learn and realize what's actually happening. This is exactly why people don't do it, because they would rather stay in that shell and be accepted for the little tiny bits of whatever it is that they get, especially as a man, because you have to do whatever it is to be accepted and appreciated and respected. So that's why a lot of people don't do these things that and then we, we need to do these things, because if we don't, then we're allowing it all to still keep being crumbled right in our faces by the people that are manipulating and giving the thought processes to every single one of us with every new album that comes out, with every new television show that comes out, with every new movie that comes out, with every new magazine that comes out, with every commercial and everything that is manipulating what we can and cannot say and what we do and do not think about or react to or not. And so if we don't speak about these things, being the people that don't get paid by satanic money to be able to try and reheal ourselves for the things that we know we're all going through, we will fail. Yeah, we, we, we will. I, I've got to address something real quick. And we, we will fail because we don't know how to fail the system. Something that um, Rebecca said a minute ago, the system collapses when you don't participate in yeah. And what Susie Rosenberg, and we, we've had this conversation a few times. Said, Gerard, I think you're not aware blacks are targeted by design by law enforcement. Uh, Susie, I have to tell you that I grew up in the Washington, D.C. area. And I have to tell you that I watched my friends be chased by cops. The first two people who pulled guns on me, one was an off-duty cop. The other uh, wasn't. Uh, I was an on-duty cop. 
I've been on the side of, uh, I forgot the name of the highway when I was 17. I had a paintball gun in the back seat, was ride with my friend and got pulled over by the cop. And then 14 or so cop cars pulled up. I was up by Germantown, in the middle of the highway, had the gun pulled on me when I was 17 years old. So the reason that I don't spend time, Susie, and whether or not the laws target black people, they have since the very beginning. You know, the whole white supremacy thing was created by the government. You've got the black codes. The reason I don't spend time on it is because I have black skin. That's why. The reason I don't is because it's not interesting to listen to a black man talking about black men. It's not interesting to listen to a white man talking about white men. But when men stand up for women and women stand up for men and black folks stand up for white folk, poor white folk, that's when I that's that's the only reason I have a reason. That's the only reason I'm here. Like, I, I'm not here to stand up for what I consider to be my identities. The system collapses when we stop playing identity favors. And and right on topic with what Todd had just said a minute ago, I was doing a lot. And I told the story a while ago. I was doing a live stream. I want to say it was about six months ago, seven months ago. And I saw all these police cars out front in front of me, not or the ambulance drive by. And I even mentioned on the live, what the hell is this, you know, this police and ambulance? I don't know what's going on. But it was this uh, white brother, poor white brother who I knew, and he worked landscaping around where I was at. And at the age of, I want to say he was 14, his parents decided that they just didn't want he and his brothers uh, and sisters anymore and dropped him off in the street in Philly somewhere and just drove away. And that young boy has dealt with that hatred for his entire life. And so the reason the police were there and the ambulance was there, and I found out a day or two later, is because that man decided to take a rope and go out in the woods and hang himself. And this is a brother I talked to a few times and I knew he was going through stuff and there were days he cussed at me. And I did the best I could to try to be nice to him and understand his story and forgive him. But this is why I don't do white privilege. This is why I only talk about black privilege. This is why I don't play any damn games when it comes to this, because this system needs to die. It needs to die years ago. And the only way that's going to happen is if people start standing up for each other. So, yeah, no, I've been chased by the police. I learned how to duck in driveways so they don't chase me. Now, the fun thing about that growing up in the PG County uh, uh, area in Maryland was that the police that were chasing us were all black. <laughs> That's the fun thing. What a lot of people don't realize is that I, I, white cops have never been the hardest on me. You know who's the hardest on me? Black cops, the ones who need to show their friends that they're tough on me. So yeah, that's why I don't play white and black anymore. I don't play the game because I think when you really dig into the system and you stop listening to the leaders and the books and the politicians and everybody who makes big dollars keeping the system afloat, you realize the only way this wins is when Lori and Todd get together and say, you know what? You have pain. I have pain. Let me tell you my pain. You listen to my pain. And yeah, we, we our, our swords gnashed a little bit, but it's OK because, you know, I love you and you love me. And we need this to end. So that's why. I, I'm sorry. I didn't mean to write oh, that. Look. That's perfect. That's exactly what I think the whole point is. It's not just little people against each other, no matter what category, what sex, gender, whatever, color, whatever place in the world we come from. We are all oppressed. We are being depopulated as we speak, been going on a long time, and now it's in full swing. So it is us against the Illuminati, the New World Order, and that's it, really, anymore. It's time to stop with uh, with the kindergarten playground stuff, you know? Well, to me, the relationship stuff and the communication is the biggest and most important part of it. So this is the same type of situation that um, I went through with some. I grew up around nothing but black dudes in my hood, and they loved me. To oh, I, I can tell. I can tell. You don't have to say that, Todd. I, it's, yeah, it's and brother. they love me, and they respect me a certain way, and certain ones because they just seen they seen what it was with me out here. So now, when I was able to sit down now, because I can, because I do, uh, I, I do vocalize on on a lot of things with a lot of different people, just because I have to, because I give a fuck about them. I don't give a fuck what color they are. I I love them like 
whatever it is. And so I'll start to explain to them and tell them about, well, look, ain't nothing really different the ways that you grew up in certain things. Because one of his homeboys said some shit to me about some white privilege shit. I'm like, there wasn't no damn white privilege over here, brother. I went through the same shit you did. My mom was a stripper. Uh, Was yours? Uh, Yeah. And how many do you know that was living this way? Was she on welfare? Yeah. Okay. We got the same cheese then. Did you ever get some charity newsies and stuff like that? Yeah. Yeah. Well, so did I. So did I. Did, did your fathers beat on you and things like that? Was you around drug activities? Was they involved in crimes and drug activities and use you for certain types of criminal activities as well? Yeah. Yeah. I said, well, see, the, the, the divide is, is the people that's dividing us, that's controlling the money and the finances. And everything that's really going on. So it it shouldn't be us. We're all being used for the same thing for them, for their drugs and everything else. So it's the same thing that's going on with man and woman. It's the same thing that's going on right now with us about this. So if we don't get through this to be able to teach people these things and really be able to talk about these things, we don't get to a certain level to be able to feel the angers and the pains that we should be against the people that have done it to us. Instead, we attack the people that's trying to teach us through their pains for us to learn and we can't help each other learn so we can never get past it. So we keep the hold of the emotions against the man or the woman or the black person or the white person or the classes or whatever it is, never being able to teach each other how to get away from that to help each other grow from it and understand that we don't mean neither one of us mean to be these ways. We have all been affected and it's doing what it's supposed to do to keep us separated and not talking about the things that should give you the right types of angers about the right things. Yep. No, yeah. And like, there's been stuff in my life you think of a um, 60-year-old uh, upper middle class woman and you think, oh, you privileged bitch. And no, man, we've had incest. I grew up in, like, the lower middle class, two working parents. Back when women didn't work, my mom had to, with an eight-person household and a house half half the size of the one I live in now with two people in it. And, you know, shit. Seen my shit, my neglect. And, you know, then when I grew up, I grew up. Into a marriage that was abusive and abusive of my children. My children sexually abused by the father. Can you guys imagine that? Did your wife do that to your kids? I don't know. But we all have our pain. But see, hold on, hold on one second. Hold on, hold on. You see what you look, you gotta think. Did your wife do that to your kids? So now there's another hit at the men. There's another hit at the men that can be used. No, no, I I love you. I know, I don't, I know you. But look, you got to think about the people that will listen and feed into the exact same things that we all feed into to make that just the biggest stamp of this whole conversation right now on parts of it. I'm just saying, you cannot tell a book by its goddamn cover. No, not at all. By what's in my bank account or what's not, what color my skin is, what gender I am. People get abused all over this world, from babies to adults, whatever time it happens, it's always horrible. So just saying that, just saying that's the whole thing. And and I'm sure there's men that are, and there's men that are raping these little boys too, and that's terrible, but we got to think about it. It's all set up. It's all set up. It's all set up. So it's all set up, but but these, there's a lot of men out here that they only want to protect these women. They only want to work their um, ass off to be involved with these women. They want to be seen by these women. They they grow up with their mothers that are being beat on and abused. Stop interrupting. Am I really interrupting that much, you guys? Just okay. Well, so let me say something there. um, there, um. Large Timonian. So um, (laughs) I, I, I heard what Lori said. And I'll be honest, Todd, I opt to not jump in on something like that. And the only reason why is because I I know Lori is intellectual enough to know, like, oh. what comes out of her life. And you were just making an example for everyone else. but it, it's Yeah, like, not her. I, mean, I know she's so not. It, it, it but, was but there's a lot of women in here that are still on some bullshit right now. And I don't give a fuck what they think about me. But well, I want well, them to know let's, what. Let's, 
But let's, hang on. let's not call it bullshit because because I mean, I'm sorry, but I still got the hood in me too, and I hate being attacked so much sometimes. You no, know? like I'm doing this for everybody. I don't have to do this shit. I, I, I hear you, but their reality is their reality, right? Your reality is your reality, and Lori's reality is hers. And so, kind of on message, I I try to stay in myself because I know that you do amazing job. You're doing your job. They're, and they're there I go exactly. cutting motherfuckers off again, but I'm sorry. You're, we all have a certain type of job right. we have to do everyone, in a certain way. Right. Every, everyone is good at something and sucks at everything else. And, and so, but I, I try to let people be the authentic them. Right. And it's necessary to let people do that because we've not been through anything in their shoes right none of the women on here who if they're attacking i don't I, hopefully that that's not what's happening but none of them have lived in your shoes none of them know a, a, you know a man can be brought to hung himself as quick as anybody else um and by the same token you haven't lived in any of these women's shoes and so we're all given this need to fight and who's the problem and who am i mad at and who am i gonna blame and blah 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 and for the most part I think I sit back and I, I, I try to, and I'm not a psychologist by any stretch of the means, but I was married once, which kind of qualifies me to a certain degree. And she was from New York. So, you know, I almost died a few times. I know when to kind of just step back and just like look at the psychology of it and just say, okay, I'm processing this and I'll pick and choose what I'll say when I'll say it. So I don't get choked or get no glass put in my soup or nothing like that. Um, but if we can, I think if we can just all learn to listen more, somebody posted it a minute ago, and let everybody live in the space they need to, right? Like it, it would, it would behoove us to to step up to a level where we can say, you know what, I live through hell, but I have no idea the hell someone else lived through. My hell, I didn't deal with too well because it was very specific to me. But that person, maybe, you know, I, I can make light of what they went through, but maybe they can't deal with it as well. Like this whole childbirth thing. I mean, unfortunately, men don't have any other orifice, but, you know, probably the anus. We'd be worth can. more. We'd be, we'd be more. Be honest with you, right. If if somebody pulled a baby out of my anus, it, I, you know what? I'd we'd be, we, 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 now we would have the power. We would have I the power. Be, you got a tiny orifice at the end of your penis. That would be the one. See, <laughs> have you Mark, seen that video? Oh, God, that was nasty. That's I've had far? two babies. None of them came out my ass. I'm, I'm just, I'm simply <laughs> saying that everybody's kind of got their own thing, and and they say that women can deal with pain better than men, and I don't know if that's true. It's a spectrum, and. Who knows what time you were at that time in your life and blah, blah, blah. The bottom line is this. Everybody's been through their own personal hell. Are you taking Absolutely. that personal hell and you're trying to make a heaven out of this hell that these billionaires created in this world? Or are we just doing our best to keep the system up, picking and choosing who we want to fight with? And I'll just, I just try to do my best for my very privileged <laughs> Um to not talk about anybody else's junk and just deal with my own junk and try to listen to other people. Yeah. Well, I have to talk about everybody's junk. I watch it all too much and I've seen it all through my life and the shit pisses me off. So I'm going to speak it exactly. You I see it. Be you. That's so you, know what? If you. If you don't listen to consciousness and where it's driving you, you'll fail. you got to yeah. listen to you. Yeah. Absolutely. And you know what? We're all different people with different perspectives and we all three have the same goal and we all three have the same love for humanity and we don't like this big something on these human face forever shit and we're fighting it so we need all of our voices and I really really thank you and appreciate you for coming on here and having this discussion oh I love you I love you too. I love you so much. Oh, you already know what it is. I love you both. I love all of you on here. What, what's this Scooby guy saying? Was he just changing his voice up? He was. Go ahead, do it again. My bad. I was talking again, overpowering everyone. My bad. What happened? I don't know. But I heard you say some squeaky girl voice or something. What was you saying? Go ahead and. That happened, that. Man. I don't know. I don't even know what I was going to say. It, it just it happened. I, I don't know. 
<laughs> I'm just here. Uh, <laughs> I'm so here. What, you know what Tony Smith always says about you, Jordan? You're a uniter, and that is what you are. You're a uniter. Because you're just so, your heart is huge. And your mind is huge, and you are a fighter, and you're a gigantic empath. That's what I say. And I've learned so much from you, and you've enhanced my own uh, good things about me, and helped me think about some things that aren't so good that I'm going to grow in. And Todd, you too. And Todd, you do it. It's more challenging with you. It's more like, I want to slap you right now. But it has the same effect because it's um, growing and learning and looking through someone else's eyes. And, you know, um, someone younger than me, I wasn't always this person at this age. So as we grow, we, we grow. Yeah. If we need to. Right? Yeah. Yes, most definitely. People would not believe the person that I used to be at all. You would not believe it. It, it, it would. It's completely different. I promise oh, you. Oh, I believe it. I believe it. Oh, I know who you are, brother. I I know who you are. I grew up with you. I we we, we you, I went to school at a high school called Friendly High School, and but nothing friendly about it. We shipped in kids from Southeast D.C., which was the murder capital of the United States at the time which is why I talk the way that I do. It's a survival skill in America. Um, and anytime you had anybody who did not have dark skin running with us, oh, that brother then did some of the most darkest things to get the respect that he did. Because if you, if you think about it, when you take someone who is, I guess, from a category called the majority, and you force them to raise up with the minority and what they've been through, they're going to treat that brother or sister like hell. So I, I I got an idea of what you've been through. But there was something that you said earlier before I, I when we'll start to wrap this up. Uh, uh, it's something, Lori, actually, you just said. And you said, yeah, we're all good people and we work together and we're trying and da, 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 da. And all of that is true as long as there's no penis between us. Usually when you put penis between us, that's when it breaks people. Something about that. When you put that thing in there. It's just, it, you know, you could be the best person outside of your relationship, your marriage or whatever. But when you go to that level, we all become a little cuckoo and we do things and say things we're not supposed to do. So, like, the whole relationship thing is different from, I think, just the whole male and female perspective and discussion. Anyway, that's a whole nother level. But what you said, uh, Todd, I ran into someone that reminded me of you in that situation um, a few months ago. And with the brother, he was talking to me and he said, you know what? My problem is I can't act how I, I grew up, you know, and he was what you would call a white dude. And uh, he said, I used to use the N word all the time. And I was like, oh, OK, you grew up. He said, I grew up in the community. I was like, OK, I know you. Yeah, I used to get on the bus and all my friends when I was growing up, it didn't matter who you were. You was you get on the bus and the white dude be like, hey, nigga, nigga, and they get on the black dude be like, hey, nigga, nigga, nigga. and the Chinese dude be like, hey, nigga. and then we're all we all friends. Like it was a, that N word was a term of endearment. It was no big deal. He said, but I can't use that term anymore. And I said, we just, you know, and, 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 he, and my point to him was, I said, we, we do live in some very odd times because you identify more with being black or in a black neighborhood than most black people who grow up in middle class suburban neighborhoods who are now telling you that you can't use the words that you are closely more identified with than what they ever have been, right? We live in these weird times. And I think the only reason that we live here is because we believe the bull shizzle that's handed to us from on high. We listen to the people who cause all the problems and we think they're gonna give us tools to solve the problems and they're not. Mm -hmm. You know, I think we got to let people, once again, live within their own space of who they are. And if we can, swallow as much as we can to let them be the authentic, the authentic them. Because how we started this out is the reason this is all a problem is because nobody's free. And we have to keep going back and focusing on the fact that until we free everybody and let them live the lives they need to lead, we're going to get all this hostility amongst all the people who none of them actually caused any of. 
Yeah. Well, we got to start with us first, though. We got to know where it all come from. You know, like yeah. why, who is most important to everything. We don't start with us and start to realize that it's us that are agreeing with the things, the ways that we treat each other or anything. And we don't fix that and get salty about that. We ain't going to be able to fix none of it because that's the most important part about all of it is the things that they have taken away from us to be able to love each other, to be able to respect each other and to be able to listen to each other. Right. We're a microcosm, right? We're a small little part. We're a cell of three people talking right now in this universe, this world of uh, 7.7 billion. But there's a whole bunch of us like everywhere in these circles. So, yeah. Yeah, yeah. I get both of you. I love you both. Hey, I love, I love you, you both. I love we're you guys. Small. We're all small parts of a whole. And I think if we're all willing to do what we're supposed to do for the whole family, then we don't have any problems. You know, but we're, we're unfortunately, we've learned to fight more for ourselves and our identities and our countries than the entire human race. And until we learn how to look at everybody as a cousin and family and stand up for everyone and let them, you know, respect the cross that they have to bear, we're going to be in big trouble. So. Well, that's why we do what we do, because we're loving people that don't even love us. And we're doing it through the cares that we have for them that they don't even know how to care. But you know what? Loving us. Love yourself. First. Dude, that's got to be our number one goal. That's, I that's why. And it's been, it's been a hard, long life lesson for me. But I got this shit now. I'm serious. Got yeah. it. Got yeah. it. All right. People. You I'm can't let y'all go. You can't love anyone else until you love yourself first. Okay, I love you, Gerard. Hey, I love you guys. Thank you very much, and thank you, everyone else. I love you all. Thanks for the conversation, everybody. I can't wait to see the comments because I love y'all more. Bye. Well, these people are on it. It's the only reason I log on to Facebook anymore is because you have real talent. You, you have very sexy minds all over this area. Uh, area on Facebook, mostly not in our, our local areas. But anyway, listen, y'all have a great day. Anytime you guys want to do it again, let me know. It would be great to do more of these panels. I'm, tired uh, I'm ready. Calls. Anytime you guys are ready, this is what I live for is every one of us. This is this is my job. This is my job. Awesome. No. All right. Y'all have a great day. You too. All I right. love you all. Thank you. As soon as I figure out how to turn it off, because that's the I know. Going. I can't either. Let me turn this off. I done this okay. in a minute, and I'm pressing buttons. And I ain't done this in a minute, and I'm still here. And everybody in the left, because that's how it goes in my life. Everybody just leaves, and I'm trying to figure out what the hell button do I press. But don't nobody guess. That's just you know, or maybe it's their business. All right, cool. I think that might be it.